Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna share how to save your dogs if they're ever poisoned. You never know when your little buddies might be in Roomba mode and accidentally eat something they're not supposed to. But don't worry, you're not alone. Everyone has definitely gone through the same thing one way or another. Full disclosure, I'm not a professional. I'm just sharing my experience in hopes that you guys can learn what to do if you ever find yourselves in the same sticky situation. So one day, I was told that our house was scheduled to be fogged for mosquitoes. I was like, no, what am I gonna do with Chap? I have to go to work and it's not safe to leave him alone in the house. Chap was two years old at that time. He was super active, extra naughty, and innocently curious. So leaving him alone in the house was definitely not an option. I asked my boss if I can bring him to work and surprisingly, he kinda lit up. I didn't know he actually likes dogs. If you know what my boss is like at work, you would think he could have been the devil himself. <laughs> Thank goodness my boss is a dog lover. Once I was at work, my boss called me into a meeting. Naturally, I asked my friend to watch chat for a bit. All of a sudden, my friend barged into the room shouting like a crazy person. She was like, Mel, Mel, I'm sorry. I went to the bathroom for a bit. And then when I came back, I saw chap eating rat poison in the corner. I was like, Mom! Can you imagine my horror? It felt like the world had ended. Seriously guys, if you're going somewhere with your dogs, please remember to check if there's anything dangerous wherever you leave them. I definitely wished I did a little recon before bringing him to work. Anyways, I instinctively googled vets that are near me and came across a clinic that had no pictures, no ratings or reviews, but it was about 10 minutes away from where I was. I have never heard of this vet before and my gut was telling me that it was going to be a little sketchy but still i had to risk it my dog's life is in danger as you guys can probably guess when your mind's going a million miles an hour and your vision starts to tunnel and you're not thinking clearly you're bound to hit some bumps along the way. When you're fighting for time, let me just say, every single thing becomes an obstacle. As I was driving, I felt like running over every motorcycle, every person walking by, and definitely speeding past every red light. My anxiety and fear has taken over any logic. To make things worse, I had gotten lost for a fair bit because the pin in the Google map was not registered correctly, since the clinic was just the vet's house on some small road. It's common knowledge here in Indonesia that small streets don't tend to get mapped correctly. So my 10 minute drive to the vet ended up being a 30 minute drive. I was so worried that the poison had spread all over. I saw Chap was hard of breathing and his eyes looked like he was so weak. Once at the clinic, I started shouting like a crazy person. I was like, help, please help. And this nurse replied in a calm manner, please have a seat and fill out the forms. I couldn't take it. I blew up. I said, this is an emergency. I need to see the doctor now. Only after all that embarrassing shouting did the doctor finally pop his head out from his door and gave me the signal to come in. The doctor was super nice and helpful. I'm forever grateful to him. After the doctor's swift checkup on Chap, the doctor said I'm lucky I got there when I did. The poison has started to spread, but not enough to cause a permanent damage to his internal organs. My goodness, all I could think about were all the what ifs to prevent all of this. If only I double checked the office before bringing Chap, or if only I tied up Chap to my table. Or if only I checked for any vets nearby the office and actually tried to visit it once so I wouldn't get lost. So many mistakes that would have been prevented if I was more prepared. So parents, please learn from my mistakes. We have to cover our bases wherever you plan to frequently take your little buddy. Any amount of time wasted means risk that could have been prevented. Those few precious minutes you wasted on googling could be make it or break it for your dogs when they're poisoned. I remember the doctor told me one great tip. If your dog accidentally ate poison, this is the lesson of the day. You can give them activated charcoal to buy yourself some time and prevent absorption into the bloodstream, which can damage other organs. And please note that activated charcoal is not curative. It's 
only a preventive step to reduce the absorption of toxins by 80% in just 3 hours. Here where I live, there's one brand that I know and use all the time growing up. It's called Moe. So how does it work? Activated charcoal is a form of carbon process to have small pores to increase surface area that is used to absorb and bind toxins and chemicals to prevent the body from absorbing them. Think of it like a magnet. Activated charcoal has a negative charge that will attract toxins that have a positive charge. Once it's been bound to the charcoal, it will be neutralized and won't let go. Then it'll flow through the digestive tract and be expelled through the stool. Don't be surprised if the poop is black, it's completely normal. The nice thing about Nodit or activated charcoal, it's so easy to find and it's cheap. You can find it at any pharmacy or even the mini marts around in my country. My advice, always have some stock ready at home. Or if you're going somewhere with your dogs, you should definitely bring some. Anything can happen. So if your dog ate something they're not supposed to, you would have it ready. Just remember that the 10, 20 minutes looking for not it could be the difference in saving your pet's life. So in my story, thankfully Chap didn't eat enough of a lethal dose and I happened to rush quick enough to the vet just in time. One of the things the doctor did first was force feed Chap some charcoal because rat poison happened to be one of the toxins that can be neutralized by carbon. As amazing as charcoal is, it won't work with every kind of poison. Poisons like ethanol, cyanide, or alcohol unfortunately won't be of any help. The rule of thumb is that charcoal won't work with acid, alkalide, anything corrosive, and alcohol-based substances. I've put together two lists of toxins that can and cannot be absorbed by activated charcoal. Feel free to pause and take a look. Another important thing to keep in mind Always double check for each brand's dose and usage since they will defer. Then don't forget to convert that human dose into your respective dog's weight. I do want to warn everyone to please double check your research in relation to your activated carbon brand of choice because sometimes there will be some inconsistency. From what I've read online from multiple sources, on average, the recommended dosage for dogs is 1 to 3 grams per kilogram body weight. Using this rule of thumb, I tried to apply this to Chap's dosage and I was a little confused. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comments below. Here are my assumptions. I took the middle dose of 2 gram per kilogram body weight and Chap weighs in at 15 kilogram. 15 times 2 equals 30 gram is needed. Now if we take a look at the descriptions on Naughty's bottle, one knotted tablet contains 125 milligram of activated charcoal. If we follow online articles recommendation of 30 gram or 30,000 milligram for chap, we divide 30,000 milligram total needed activated charcoal by 125 milligram per tablet. This means that Chaplin needs 240 tablets of knotted? There's no way that this is the right dosage for dogs because the recommended dosage for humans from the bottle is only 5 to 7 tablets per dosage with a maximum amount of 20 tablets per day. So my advice here is to just follow the instructions from your choice of activated carbon brand and convert it to your dog's weight in comparison to the average person. Better to slightly overestimate than underestimate. I would trust the manufacturer more since online articles never specifically disclose all of their assumptions. For example, maybe the 1 to 3 grams per kilogram body weight can mean 1 to 3 grams of total carbon powder instead of the actual activated carbon ingredient. Just like if you're eating a 200 grams of steak doesn't mean you're eating 200 grams of protein, but only 50 grams. So the doctor's actual recommendation for chap at 15 kilos is to take 3 to 5 tablets. This is my estimation for dogs of different sizes if you do decide to try and buy specifically the Nodded brand. This is important to note. You still need to neutralize the poison in your pet's body. Activated charcoal is meant to only buy you time to get to your vet and minimize the poison from spreading. You can follow Chap's dosage as your starting point, but it's just a ballpark figure. If you want to be absolutely sure, 
Please ask your trusted vet since body weight and age affects the dosage. Once you find out the correct dosage, I suggest writing it down on the bottle itself so you won't forget or waste precious minutes trying to research and calculate the dose. Especially if you're in a panicked state, you can't rely on your mind to think clearly or be 100% logical. Do whatever you have to do so that if you're ever in that scenario, you won't waste any time. And the last tip for me, how to give activated charcoal to your dog. If you find your little buddy in a situation where they have ingested some poison, you will fall into two scenarios. Scenario one, they're still active and energetic because you caught it early on and the poison has not spread. Or scenario two, their appetite has dramatically decreased and they are low in energy because their body is overloaded by the poison. Here are my methods on how to deal with both scenarios. In an Asian household like mine, I use what is readily available all day, every day. It's rice! Feel free to use anything that you can stuff chunks of activated charcoal into. Ideally, some sort of sticky or dense carb that is dog safe and you know your dogs can't resist. Some alternatives include plain white bread or bananas. So in Chap's case, he can't resist rice. I usually grab some leftover cooked rice that is a little dry since it'll be sticky or hard enough for you to make rice balls. Keep your hands and fingers slightly wet so the rice would not stick on your hands. Flatten the rice on your palm, put one tablet or half a tablet in the middle, then surround it with the rice. Don't take too long to mold it into a ball because the idea is to hide the charcoal in the rice bowl. Overworking the rice might spread the smell and taste of the charcoal on the outside. Don't forget to make the slice swallowable for your dogs. You don't want them to choke on the rice balls. If you know Chap, as gluttonous as he is, he would eat everything. So I'm glad that he's easy to fool. Depending on what you are more comfortable with, you can try out these two methods in liquid or tablet form. For tablet form, it is very quick and easy. The trick is to get your dog to sit, then tilt the head up. Use your thumb and middle or pointer finger as a claw over your dog's snout. Use the other hand to hold the tablet and push down the bottom jaw to open out their jaw. As their jaws open, try to put the tablet on the back part of their tongue as possible. Then use your hand to keep their jaw closed while stroking the neck to encourage swallowing. If you sense your dog is very tense or aggressive, get some help or the proper tools such as thick gloves. Please remain calm because if your dog senses you're nervous, it'll cause them to be even more nervous. I would suggest either having someone gentle hold their mouth open or use a sturdy object to hold their jaws open. Either use a rolled up towel, a wooden stick, or their favorite chew toy. Place the object on the back of their jaw this will help prevent your dogs from shutting its jaw on your fingers. Just remember, no matter how much your pet loves you, an injured animal will feel vulnerable and scared and might lash out or snap out of self-defense. Crush the noted tablet to powder or find one in powder form that's food grade. Dilute the activated charcoal powder with drinking water, just enough that it is runny and not a paste. Then you put it into a plastic syringe. You can buy some online for very cheap but make sure the syringe can detach the needle or find syringes that are designed without one because you won't be using it. Lift the upper lip and squirt in the gap behind their canine teeth. They will usually just lap it up. Please remember to be patient and do not lose your cool. They're probably nervous, scared, and confused. Being angry or flustered will not get your dog to obey faster. So if you see your pet start to be anxious, try to give them time to calm down first, and then try again. Some dogs will spit out the watered down carbon since it tastes bitter. My tip here is to mix in a little bit of honey just to add a touch of sweetness. Plus, natural honey has healing properties. Anything helps, I say, especially if you find your little buddy to be in a weak state. I've searched far and wide to find a reliable and honest source of honey. But the one that I personally use with my family is this one brand. There are so many brands who sell half-truths for the sake of profit. This brand is one of the very few brands that actually delivers on what they promise. It's pure raw honey, non-processed, and no added sugar. Natural is best as I always say, so it's really safe for our dogs to eat as nature intended in the wild. Disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by Suka brand. 
maybe one day but this is what i've drank for years now and i genuinely like the flavors in their collection I will put all the links in the description if you guys want to try them out. For all methods and scenarios, don't forget to give them treats to wash out the bitter taste of the charcoal, but only if they are in a calm state. If you give them treats when they are in an agitated, flustered, or nervous state, you will reinforce that negative behavior during medication time. This is a grave mistake because as your dog ages, they need to see medication as a normal thing and not something to fear. So there you go guys, my terrifying experience I had with chat. Hopefully my tips and experience can help all the porns out there. Just remember, activated charcoal is not meant to cure but to prevent the poison from spreading and to buy yourself some time to take your buddy to the vet. Time is of the essence. Preparation is key to saving their lives instead of panicking like a headless chicken. Share in the comments below what other good practices and preparation tips so we can help other parents. Like this video if it helps and subscribe for your support means the world to us. Until next time, bye!